Today we're going to be focusing on the beauty part of Beauty and the Bolt by doing a highly requested video on how I achieve my perfect makeup look. Just kidding. That's not at all what we're doing. I will be teaching you how to engineer the bejesus out of your very own customizable eyeshadow palette, which is kind of more my speed. Jackman calls. Turned out that the trend is palette wood, not wood palettes. Ugh. This is why I should have my Pinterest privileges revoked. This palette design is relatively simple. Just three layers of birch plywood and some clear acrylic. It's designed to be made using our Dremel laser cutter, hashtag sponsored, thanks fam. Uh, but any laser will do. The base layer is most of the case with the living hinge and nice branding on the back. More on that living hinge very shortly. The next layer has secret inserts drilled out for magnets on the back which hold the eyeshadow pots in place. After our initial drilling, the magnets didn't fit snugly because the holes weren't completely flat. So our nifty solution was to use a flat nose end mill attachment after some initial drilling to create a better surface for the magnet to fit into. And this worked perfectly. The next layer holds the eyeshadow pots. We designed this layer so the pots can be interchangeable in case you can't make up your mind about what's gonna be in your palette. We also drilled two holes into the back of this layer for clasp magnets. The next layer was laser cut from clear acrylic so that you can see the eyeshadow through the palette. Two holes in the back hold the magnets for the clasp. Believe it or not, we made the hinge for our palette out of the same piece of wood that makes up the base and cover of the palette. This kind of hinge is known as a living hinge. Now, this wouldn't be Beauty in the Bolt if we didn't get into the awesome material science behind the build, so let's get into it. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into it, you should hit that subscribe button. Like, Okay, now let's get into it. A living hinge is simply an altered part of the parent material, meaning that a hinge can be put in without needing to join two separate pieces of material together. You've likely already taken advantage of living hinges multiple times today. They're commonly used because they're low cost and generally pretty durable and very customizable. Me and my love of mechatronics may be biased, but one of my favorite uses is in microelectromechanical systems. Think stuff like accelerometers. An even more visible example of living hinges in your daily lives is disposable packaging, so restaurant takeout containers and soda cans. Living hinges out in the wild are most commonly created through injection molding and 3D printing, but in our version, we used our handy dandy Dremel laser cutter to create this living hinge. By understanding the concepts behind the design of hinges, less trial and error experiments are required, reducing the cost of creating them. Hashtag science hacks, or engineer hacks rather. Before we get into the specifics of our eyeshadows palette hinge, let's talk about how living hinges work in general. At the most basic level, they're just compliant mechanisms, which rely on their ability to deform and then return to their original shape. Two important factors to consider are the tensile properties of the material and the geometry of the piece. Tensile properties show how a material will react under tension forces, which is stretching and pulling. They can be determined through tensile tests, through tensile tests. <sighs> They can be determined through tensile tests, which is basically just measuring how much a material elongates, which is strain, under an applied load, which is stress. We'll graph that into a stress-strain curve. The major tensile properties that we're going over today are elasticity, yield strength, and tensile strength. The curve initially increases linearly, making up the elastic region. Within this region, no permanent deformation has occurred to the material, and the material will return to its original shape after the stress is reduced. This is called elastic behavior, and this region obeys something called Hooke's Law, which describes a directly proportional relationship between stress and strain. The elastic region is probably where we want our living hinge to live. Young's modulus is the slope of the elastic region of the curve, and it's a measure of the stiffness of the material as it undergoes goes stress, deforms, and then returns to its original shape after the stress is removed again. The larger the value of the Young's modulus, the more elastic it is, because more force is required to deform it. At the curved part of the graph, Hooke's Law doesn't apply anymore. This causes permanent deformation of the material, and the material takes on a plastic behavior. The point at which this shift occurs is called the material's yield strength. There's also something called tensile strength, which is the maximum stress level before a material breaks. Sounds like finals week. Polypropylene and soft PLA have some of the best material properties and are industrially used for living hinges. For our project, however, we used birch plywood, which is a popularly used material for laser cutting, and also, it's really pretty. Whew! All right, we made it! Now that you're an expert on material science behind living hinges, we can finally talk about how the geometry of the design impacts the hinge. Living hinges can be created through a multitude of methods. In this project, we used curve bending, which is the process of cutting a number of slots into a piece of material that allow it to bend. As I mentioned before, living hinges are highly customizable. Designs include wave lattice and beehive lattice patterns, or wherever your imagination takes you within 
the restraints of physics, of course. We use the straight lattice pattern for ours, which is one of the most common ones. Lattice hinges rely on each link's ability to twist or bend. They're made up of beams linked together. In a straight lattice hinge, two junctions that don't deform are connected by a piece called the spring connection. The spring connections deform and twist to allow the entire material to bend. This allows the material to be super flexible because each beam twists just a little bit. And when all these twists add together, they create one big twist. Factors that affect the amount of bend include the length of the lattice cuts, the distance between them, and the thickness of the material. The hinge pattern that we used is linked down below. There's a bunch of fancy math equations we can use to calculate the exact stress-strain curve, but in essence, it's basically just a simple concept. Each link can take a certain amount of torsional stress, and those add together to create this complex compound living hinge. Isn't it cool how all these concepts come together in the end? All right, all right. Back to the eyeshadow palette though. To make the outer cover lie flat against the bottom layers, we laser cut triangular pieces out of acrylic to create a tapered effect, like those awesome Microsoft Surface books. Who put that in there? My name is Zyla Foxen. Oi. With all the parts of the palette complete, we layered them together using super glue to make our final product. Since we're professionals here, we also laser cut a stamp and pressed our logo into the shadows. We'll link all the files below, but with all this new knowledge, I hope that you'll try to design your own for your own needs. Also, pro tip, design it so that you can fit like Morphe palette pots in there. Just saying. And there you have it, your very own eyeshadow palette. If we get enough lakes, lakes, lake our video, please. Pond it too. If we get enough likes, maybe I'll show you my Beauty in the Vault hair routine next. Spoiler alert, it's usually just a ponytail holder. By the way, our Instagram has been straight fire lately, but no one is finding us via hashtags anymore for some reason, so you should go give us a follow because we're really cool and stuff. Also, please back us on Patreon, then maybe we'll give you a shout out on Instagram or something. Thanks so much for watching, this is Zyla from Beauty in the Vault, and special thanks to one of our interns, Michelle, for helping bring this project to life.